Thank you, Acting Speaker. And I rise to speak on the Disability and Social Services Regulation Amendment Bill 2023. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank the Minister for Disability, Ageing and Carries, uh, Lizzie Blanthorn, in the other place, and the Department for all the work that has been done to, get, uh, to bring this bill to the House. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the earlier contribution from the member for Yan Ying and her passionate advocacy for her brother and for her actions in supporting people with a disability. We know that disabled Victorians are some of the most vulnerable community members and deserve to have protections in place that work for them. That is what this bill is about. Since 2018, we've engaged in a consultative process to review the Disability Act. We are committed to making sure that our laws are fit for purpose, particularly that they are contemporary, so that they can provide meaningful change for disabled Victorians. The Disability Act review has been progressed over three stages. The first stage was completed in 2019, and the second stage is currently being undertaken. This stage focuses on addressing unintended gaps in legislative safeguards, it is also looking at how to strengthen the rights and protections of those living with a disability. I would like to acknowledge the importance of the stakeholder consultation that has occurred for this bill. This bill was informed by extensive, extensive community engagement, including a public consultation period in 2021, um, discussions with the expert Disability Act Review Advisory Group, uh, formerly chaired by Graham Innes AM, Australia's former Disability Discrimination Con Commissioner and of course with a wide range of groups across the disability sector and government. This bill will amend the Disability Act 2006, the Residential Tenancies Act 1997, uh, the Disability Services Safeguard, Safeguards Act 2018, and the Social Services Regulation Reform Act 2021. All this ensures that we can strengthen the rights and protections for people living with a disability. This bill will increase safeguards and ensure better service coordination. There are now over 150,000 Victorians who are active participants on the NDIS. These Victorians are often vulnerable and already face difficulties and inequalities. That's why we have a responsibility to make sure that the NDIS delivers for our Victorians and that it is able to provide a better deal for people with a disability and their families in Victoria. There are over 1.1 million Victorians living with a disability. Last year, we launched uh, Inclusive Victoria, the State Disability Plan 2022 to 2026, the government worked closely, uh, worked closely with uh, advocates and, and the disability sector to develop a plan that makes Victoria more inclusive and accessible. In last year's budget, we allocated $15.1 million towards our state disability plan. This included $5.4 million, which went towards the construction of 30 changing place places facilities. Each of these changing places has a height adjustable adult size changing bench bench and a tracking hoist system and enough space for two people. They are such great facilities that since the budget we've announced an additional 19 new fully accessible changing place bathroom facilities. These changing places are designed to make community spaces, including events and tourist locations, more accessible and inclusive for people with a disability. We know how valuable this is, which is why earlier this year in March we launched a new round of grant programs for these. And I note that the grant applications are currently being assessed for the changing places. Uh, I'd also like to mention that as part of the State Disability Plan, we launched our public funding campaign, Change Your Reactions. This campaign is aimed at promoting better attitudes and behaviours towards people with autism in our community. And of course, we announced $2.4 million towards a new universal design grant program. This was to provide accessible infrastructure for people with a disability, which can help improve to community, the, the community and shared facilities. We know how important these services are to Victorians with a disability. In my local area, we've seen the great results that a great support can provide. Uh, the specialist school Glen Allen provides incredible support for students from age five all the way to adults, and it has a huge range of services, including music, occupational and speech therapy, as well as physiotherapy. I'd like to give a special mention to P Principal Michael Cole, who is a great advocate for his students. I'd like to thank the school for inviting me to present the badges to this year's school leaders. And I'd also like to con congratulate those leaders, Grace Lambrick and Alexander Gilbert, as well as the new vice school captains, Destiny Pepper and Joshua Bond. The Andrews Labor government has invested in a three-stage upgrade to the school over the last four years um, that's due to open very soon. We've seen at this school the real world impacts that this support can have, and that's why this bill is so important. People with a disability deserve to live with respect, dignity, and, the ability, and, and be able to access services. That's why the Andrews Labor government has been so committed to furthering protections for people with a disability. 
This bill will also, improve, uh, also improves the services we provide by ensuring accountability around things like the NDIS and state-funded disability service providers. It will allow for additional categories for disability accommodation to be declared by the Minister. This will increase transparency in allowing community visitors to inquire into the quality and standards of supported providers to residents. The bill also amends provisions relating to the restrictive practices for Victorians on the Commonwealth disability support for older Australians. An important element of this bill is amending the new social services regulation scheme to ensure that it is properly protecting people living with a disability. I would like to especially note the need for safeguarding for our residents with a disability. We've all seen media reports about poor standards and care within the supported residential services for older Victorians and Victorians with a disability. These stories are sickening and truly disheartening. Every Victorian deserves to be treated with respect, kindness and compassion. More safeguards help address this and will hopefully make it a little easier for people living with a disability. One of these safeguards includes permitting authorised officers to enter bedrooms in supported residential services and disability residential services without consent in very limited circumstances. I'd like to note, while this is important, there are several safeguards to ensure that this only happens when it's truly necessary. These changes to the Residential Tenancy Act and Social Services Regulation uh, Act will make important changes to the lives of people living with a disability. This is about fairness and making sure every Victorian has the right to feel safe and secure. There are also several changes to make processes more efficient, such as removing a duplication process that current workers had to go through. This now allows national police checks to be recognised by workers as part of the NDIS uh, delivery. These amendments to the Disability Services Safeguard Act are so important. Another organisation in our electorate that does invaluable work for, the people, for people living with a disability is the Cerebral Palsy Education Centre, CPEC. CPEC uh, provides a range of speech pathologists, physiotherapists and occupational therapists who make a huge difference in people's lives. CPEC supports members by providing a location uh, for sessions as well as catering to care at home, at childcare, kindergarten, schools, universities Order. and other community settings and order to follow. The time has arrived for